Welcome to Enox Engineering, I'm Alan. In this video we start to make a thread stop. This is the thread stop. What it does, it clamps to the cross slide using this movable jaw which slides along this aluminium and is held in position with a roll pin. The screw on the end, the four millimetre screw, adjusts it in and out so it will clamp onto your cross slide and give you a stop. And through this hole goes a screw which goes into your cross slide so as you move in and out it will stop at that position. So today we're making this part. In the next video we'll make the screw and see how it's used. So let's go to the workshop see how we do it. So to get the measurements I've just used a vernier, digital vernier across the width of the slide, the full width to give you an idea of the material you need and then use the end to give me the depth and then the width of the block I've just used some 15 millimeter aluminium which I already had so I've transferred the sizes to a block which is like this. And to get the angle, I've used a protractor on the face. Then just judge the angle here. First thing I want to do is drill a hole in the corner there where the edge meets. And then I can drill a hole here, cut this piece out to form the dovetail. Half inch milling cutter, end mill, in a you know, 20 collet. This is the end mill I sharpened up a few weeks ago. And what I'm doing now is machining the face I've just sewn parallel. I clocked up on this by zeroing on there and getting this zero the other side. So I know this is now parallel. I've set up a dial indicator on the saddle so I can see what cut I'm putting on because I've got no way of moving it in except for the the coarse feed on the saddle so the dial indicator tells me in, th in tenths of a thou how much I've fed it in So now I'll set my dial indicator to zero, so that's the depth I want to go. So when I get that zero point I know that I'm level. I've done half of it, so now I'm going to back it out, lift, slide up, and go in to cut the other half. This is vibrating and rocking about 
what you need to do is tighten your jib strips up on the three axes that's the saddle the cross the top slide and the compound slide you tighten the jib strips up you should be able to get better cut without it vibrating too much I've just touched the edge there with the tool so now all I need to do is go to the depth that I need I changed my cutter for a 10mm instead of a half inch this material is 15mm thick so the cutter should be in the centre of this block now what I want to do is drill in to this block to the depth of this face zero on this face reset my dial indicator that's because I've changed the cutter so the zero position's moved because the cutter length is different see I've set that to zero so when that cutter touches the face It's on zero. That should be that for the million. When I finish this end off, this can fit on the end of the cross slide and then we'll start making the adjustment here to lock it. Then take a piece of 10mm wide aluminium. This is 15mm thick the body with a 10mm slot so the 10mm aluminium can put a radius on the end so that this piece will fit into there. And then what we're going to do on here is cut this off left with the top, put an angle on the back and this will form the opposite side of the dovetail. Then we're going to drill a hole in the back. So as you tighten the grub screw up in the back it pushes this piece in and locks up the bracket. And I've just filed it flat on the top. I've left a bit sticking up. I've marked down 5mm and then I've marked two marks, one in the middle of the this aluminium and one 3mm away. Then round the end I've marked the centre, 5mm down and I've marked the centre and that's where you need to drill. So the next job is to drill a hole through here and put a pin through, mill this level with the flats. I've just lined up on the hole five mil in from the edge. I've left the small block still in there so I'm clamping that in. So I can drill a three millimeter hole straight through here. That three millimeter hole will take a small pin to hold this jawing. The pin will fit tight into this hole when the jaw is fitted so that it will travel in and out along the two holes and you can't lose the jaw part. don't want this hole to go into this block. I'll tap that out so that it will go straight through. With a small round file I've just joined the two holes together. 
Now what I've done is just using the protractor which I set up before to the angle when I started to make the part I've put a line from the point in and now I'll file this piece off file it back until it will fit into the cross slide to check the angle you fit the part to the cross slide rub it up and down put some micrometer blue on the cross slide and you should have a mark most of the way across the face you can see it's touching at the top and the bottom that shows you've got the correct angle so all I'm trying to do now is reduce the, the part so when it's fitted in there this will slide on I'm still a little bit big so eventually you'll get the part to slide on you don't want that too loose but if you file too much off this jaw it's loose you're just taking up adjustment that you could have so now that's level with the top it's got the right angle and it fits on the dovetail you can either leave this square on the top or take the edges off it's up to you I think I'll leave it for the moment because I might be able to drill a hole through here to fix a dial indicator so I can actually use it for other things I've just put a half inch mild steel bar in the ER20 collet and I'm going to machine that down to 7mm diameter what I'm making is a bush to go into this hole that I've just drilled on the end so that instead of the screw thread being formed in aluminium it will be in steel there will be a head on the bush on the inside so it can't pull out that's just starting to go in the way I've done that is every time I turn the diameter size I come out and I take another 0.1 of a millimeter off the beginning so when it goes on I know I've got 0.1 of a millimeter bigger it's just a way of using your part as a gauge so I don't want that to come any smaller because I want it to be a tight fit. It will actually go inside this end. So what I need to do now is reduce this diameter down to 10, which was the diameter of the milling cutter, so it will fit in this slot. Now the saw is not important as long as it fits. That'll slide over there. So now I've got it's going on this way, so that will go inside. The diameter should fit because this is not square, it's got a radius on. I'll just put a chamfer on the back. need to file the outside diameter down level with that because that hole you can see it is near enough at the bottom so it'll have a flat bottom that will also stop it turning so that should end up it won't do because of the diameter but that will end up going that way through this hole nice tight fit
in there and as you can see as I push it in here that's putting tension on the tap so it's spring loaded let's take it out put the tap wrench on as I've got the collet fitted I've got some spanner flats so I can use a spanner on there to turn this round I'll just drop the speed. You can just see I've filed a square on the end, I've left the top, filed the two sides and the bottom so it will fit closer to the back. I can put that in the bore and then using the cap head, tighten the cap head up and that should pull the, the bush in. Because I've added the bush here, I've had to flatten off the back. The roll pin will still fit in the slot. And you can see the bush is just coming out. So now I've got a steel thread in there instead of aluminium. So I should be able to put more clamping pressure on. And the more I tighten it, it's pulling the bush out this way. So it won't come out. I've just taken a piece of um, 516 threaded bar BSW which is the thread size for the stop on the cross slide and I've turned a point on it. Now I've screwed the threaded bar in and that gives me the point so that gives me the centre position of that hole. Now if I fit the screw cutting stop, tighten the screw up, when I bring this back the point on the screw should have made a centre mark on the part. You see I've tried to draw around it to try and guess where it is but now I know exactly where the centre is. All we need to do is drill a hole through there. Well that's the aluminium block finished. In part two we'll start making the clamping screw and see how it works. Thanks for watching, hope that's useful. See you next time on Enots Engineering. <laughs>